Good afternoon world. We're off to one of the most beautiful sections of beach in Shargao Island. This is where we're heading, Pacifico Beach Bar. We've not been to this part before. So we have to pay some money to get in. This wasn't accessible before, but now they've turned it into this nice area where you can chill out on deck chairs and enjoy the beach. We discovered this by accident when we were going for a walk the other day. It's really cool. Looks like you can also rent some snorkel and a towel. I don't know what Bunnig is. <laughs> this sign says swing at your own risk. How tropical is this? You can get some beer, you can get lemonade. Very cool. Fresh buco. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a nice overview. It's very pretty. Sand is very clean. Look at this incredible little teepee setup they've made here. The aesthetic is great. Swing on the chair. Plenty of opportunities for your picture taking around here. That is how a lot of people make their decisions these days. Can I get an enviable shot? of my vacation, of where I'm staying, of where I'm visiting. If it looks good, then it makes it feel better. Are you swinging at your own risk, Story? What does that even mean? It means like, you take your life in your own hands. Look after yourself, that's right. Well, that's what it actually So swing at your own risk, yeah. Like, don't go too crazy, or if you do, it's at your own risk. <laughs> Is it fun? Whoa, look at this. And that's at your own risk. You're going wild. <laughs> You're gonna do a loop the loop in a minute. <laughs> Crazy kid. Gonna get yourself dizzy. No, I felt like I was gonna fall off. <laughs> like one of the tree truck doing there. There's some other dangers above your head story as well, look. Oh yeah. Coconut's ready to drop on your noggin. Yeah. So this is our first time actually coming here to spend the day. We normally go to the other side of Pacifico Beach where we just walk up and down. We ordered some food from the restaurant across the road and they're cooking it for us now. So I'll go and pick that up probably in about 40 minutes so we can have some lunch down here and go and watch the waves. It really is a special location here. Super beautiful. This is like that absolute paradise scene you expect when you look at the pictures of Philippines Islands. So let's just come back with the food. I want to show you everything we got here. So this is the hash potato, two rice and sweet potato fries. Yeah. There's two orders of that, isn't there? The rice goes with the spicy lentil soup, wow. which looks like that. And then we've got two burgers as well. <laughs> two veggie burgers in there. And all of that came to 810 pesos. So that's not bad to feed the whole family. <laughs> I think that's a total of about 11 British pounds. Yeah. yeah, about 12 British pounds maybe for the family to eat out. So pretty good deal story. Mm. Not bad. This is the try one of sweet potato fries. Very good, yeah? Yeah. Sweet potato fries with you. Coming up. Hello. <laughs> the channel just appeared behind you. <laughs> mm. So tell me more about it. I need information about the fry. You can't just say sweet potato fry review and not give me the review. Mm. It has a little bit of saltiness. Okay. And it's warm. Okay. Not hot. Is it soft and or crispy? It's crispy soft. Crispy and soft? Yeah, like so some it, some parts are crispy, some parts are soft. Is the crispiness on the inside or on the outside? On the outside. Ah. And then the softness is inside and it's just like crunch, smush, crunch, smush. <laughs> uh, can you tell the difference between a sweet potato fry and a normal fry? Is sweet like... potato fry is more sweet and a potato fry is more salty, like savoury. 
What about dryness, wetness, anything like that? The dryness, the dryness could be a little bit, but like in a good way. Okay, nice. You should, you should try one of these. I definitely will try one of those. That's the kind of things that people want to know when you're enjoying your food reviews, because <laughs> they can't taste it, can they? No. These guys out there, they can't taste what you're tasting. <laughs> Let's give it Look. a go myself. Mm. Can you see that? Like the crunchy um, paste, and, um, the paste inside, and the <laughs> crunchy like thing in out on the outside. It's good. I can yeah. confirm everything that story said. Very nice. And just like that, we've all finished eating. Are you full up? Yeah. Well, yeah, not massively, but yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> well, that's our only meal of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of have to be. I feel like it was enough food. It's really good that you can get a nice, decent meal here for like an affordable price. And I would say that this beach is probably the first kind of true paradise beach you see once you have left General Luna and end up in the next town along. Just the cleanliness of it, how it looks, just the shape of it, everything. It's so incredible here. You've got the option of skipping this place and heading further down the beach where it's completely free to access the same strip of sand. But this area has been cleared of all trash and People have come down to maintain the space. There's somewhere to sit in the shade. So I don't hold any resentment for people charging money for an area if they're taking care of it. It just puts skin in the game. It makes sense for somebody to turn up to a maintained space where you're gonna have at least some amenities available to you, especially if you've got kids or you're coming a little bit underprepared and you haven't got everything with you. It's nice to know as someone else has thought about that and then they can obviously profit from that and it gives them a living otherwise this patch of land would be completely unused and I've seen what happens to patches of land that are unused here the wilderness takes over but not in a good way you see a lot of the trash from obviously human waste getting caught up in the vines and stuff so having someone come down here and just maintain even the weeds is better for nature in the long run I feel it's all about humans and nature coexisting well together. Some kind of sustainable way to do it. It is that picture perfect paradise vibe here. This part of the island is going to rise in popularity very soon. I reckon in the next five years it will be completely different. But right now I feel like I am in the sweet spot. I did notice also that a lot of the professional expert surfers came down to this part of the beach to do their barrel surfing because the waves look incredible out there and for somebody who knows nothing about surfing I often look out and wonder why someone's not out at sea but I figure this place is a little bit of a high entry point a little bit of a high bar for a beginner you can see the strength of the waves even for swimming it's probably not the best place to swim at high tide but the water looks beautifully clear I have seen a few people walk out and dip themselves in the ocean which might be something we're thinking to do in a moment because I am super hot. It is incredibly, incredibly sunny today. We wanted to wait until today to show this speech because we actually discovered it about two days ago, but we weren't filming that day. And then the next day it was rainy and it was like, no, no, we've got to highlight how beautiful this is. It's something we've been making note of as well is just trying to appreciate where we are and really soak it in because in a few weeks time Sasha is going back to the UK and she won't be experiencing this kind of weather for quite some time. I don't think anybody can quite deny that this is absolutely dreamlike scenery <laughs> especially if you're in a cold place right now. I mean it's Tuesday afternoon for us and we've decided to come out here. We didn't have to come out we could have stayed at home and done our work and done our schooling and whatever we needed to do from the house and then yes we live by the beach but it was like I'm gonna come out on a Tuesday afternoon and soak this in really soak it in consciously if I was in the UK right now or somewhere in Europe in April or end of March it would not be like this weather wise there's definitely benefits to those countries too don't get me wrong I do enjoy the cold temperatures and the seasons that we have from the countries we were born in 
but when the weather gets good here, man, <laughs> it's just amazing. Daddy, yeah? Have you noticed that? Look, look how deep the snow is. Look how deep the sand is. It is very deep, isn't it? It goes right in, yeah, your feet sink. I see the family's joining me now. What's the plan then? Let's have a walk down the beach. Yeah, you want to go to the wild side? Yes, I want to get to the wild side. Come on, yeah. Let's lead story to the wild side. She hasn't seen that bit yet. <laughs> this rock has like a pattern coat on it. Look. Hey, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. It's a looks... sedimentary rock, that one, isn't it? Yeah, we should rock tumble that. Polish yeah. it. Put it in the rock tumbler. Yeah. Good plan. And maybe not polish it because that is very bad. <laughs> it never works. Oh, we need different type of grits, I think. Yeah, we need a different type of polish. Yeah, maybe you can bring some back from England with you. I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, the polish was, I think the kids kept polish stuck to the bottom of the rock tumbler, so so the rocks weren't actually getting polished. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's why they weren't as shiny as they could have been. Yeah, so if, like, you know, have, if you have a crystal, have a look at it, and if you have a rock tumbler, rock tumble it with polish, and then look, look at the difference between it. Yeah. 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 It's a good idea. That's how you get those shiny rocks, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe when I get home, I can show you. All right. She'll definitely forget to show you. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, look at that beautiful sight. <laughs> Somebody suggested on our membership page and also on our Patreon page that we measure Story before she goes back to England because she's going to be away from me for a month and then when she gets back we can see how much she's grown in that time that would be quite impressive and quite interesting to see because Sori has growth spurts sometimes she looks the same for a while and then all of a sudden she'll just blast up in height <laughs> she's already looking much taller when you compare her to when she first arrived on the island to now big difference what's the temperature of the water like? Warm, not hot, not cold. Somewhere in between warm and cold then. And cool. Cool, yeah. cool, that's it. Oh, here comes yeah. a wave. The waves are getting rougher and rougher the closer we get to this edge. Which is why I suggest the story going to see now, because if you look over that way, it's pretty rough. I don't think anyone wants to swim down there, you'll get smashed against the rocks. <laughs> Still getting that beautiful colour from the water though. If you come wandering down this coastline and you don't obviously go in the beach side, then you don't have to pay anything to be here. This is like the public beach. No one can charge you for this. Whoops, <laughs> the story just fell over. <laughs> Look at that, it keeps clearing away your footprint. You make all those lovely footprints in the sand and then look, evidence gets just wiped away. Look at that, the water's coming in from all different directions, left and right and sideways. Woo. Yeah, we're just showing story how the waves are coming in from two or three different directions here normally a bit of a warning sign not to go too far, get caught in a riptide. And this is the wild side. You can see why we called it that. And at the top of these cliffs over here, you can't see it from here, but there's actually a wooden walkway that you can come down. So you can see the view from up there. You'll have to explore that another day as well. Wow, that is rough. This reminds me of some of the waves we used to see in Portugal, the Atlantic. Look at that, our own private spot again, shaded. We can drop down our belongings. 
and enjoy this beautiful patch of beach. Look, there's no one here. There's two other people in the corner and that's it. You about to go in the water? Away they go. Are you soaking this all in, Seth? I am. Very much so. Listening to the waves. Remember this. I, I will. I'm so glad we kind of have just, just discovered this little section. It's like probably like the wildest section of Shargal that we've found so far. And just the sound of those waves is so lovely. The temperature is amazing today. Yeah. It's like a proper beach day feel. It's lovely. As long as you're in the shade. Yeah, you need it? to be in the shade. We're covered in sun cream, but we're still in the shade because in the sun it's just too much. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, look at this scene. When you look at it like this, <laughs> like, from what I'm seeing in the camera here, this is basically paradise. If you showed someone a picture <laughs> of this, they'd be like, yep, I want to be there. Yeah. If we have visitors, other visitors come, maybe, I don't know when the next visitors will come to us. But... Yeah. We'll bring them here for a picnic, like what we just done. It's pretty incredible that we've been here, what, four years, and we've only just now discovered this patch of beach yeah. ourselves. Well, I think because it kind of goes nowhere, does it? So we've walked along this beach before, but up to like the kind of straighter stretch, and then you get to the end, so we've never really bothered to come to the end because we knew there was nothing down here. We thought there was nothing, nothing. down here. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually an immense amount of beauty down here. Yeah, and it's clean, it's clean, isn't it? So clean, yeah, and the sand is beautiful. It's like ankle deep sand, it's so soft. Although you can't really swim here. No, but the you can play. The waves are too scary. You can play, you can splash. It's too much. It's too wavy, yeah? And the, I guess the surf would be pretty amazing here as well if you were into surfing. Yeah, the definitely. The waves are really good. Yeah, if you're an expert surfer, I think this is the place to be. It's kind of amusing and I guess typical us as well that as many of you know we bought our plot of land in General Luna which is like the tourist side of the island because we felt like we needed to be closer to all of the action when we have our house built. We wanted to be closer to all of the amenities like the more kind of westernised stuff so that we could have that balance between east and west lifestyle. And now that we've discovered how good Pacifico can be we're starting to question whether we put the land in the right place. But I do feel like I've mentioned before our General Luna life. I feel like maybe we'll have to fall back in love with General Luna because we don't spend enough time there anymore. We've had so much time away from it, just kind of embracing the peace and quiet of Pacifico and North Chargal that we kind of forgot what it could be like to be down that way. And of course the amenities and the different types of shop and restaurant the standard is raising up this way as well but the nature and the beaches are actually more beautiful this way so I feel like yes we would have to re-fall in love with General Luna when we finally build our house which we do believe should be starting the process next year and then we will come up here for visits come up here for our little staycations and appreciate what makes the north so beautiful. I will say though, the north I feel is a little bit more vulnerable when it comes to the storms. There's less protection here unless you really find yourself a plot out in the hills somewhere, but then you've got problems with access and where you get the roads and you know, uh, any kind of plot disputes. It happens a lot more up here, I feel. So we'll live our life in chapters. We'll have the General Luna chapter. We might have even a second property one day if we could afford it. That would be amazing. Up here, maybe even in another country too. That would be the ultimate dream, wouldn't it? Almost feels greedy just saying it. For us, story has been the ultimate gauge. We have been just basing our decisions on what she reacts to, how she feels, how she's responding to life and so far, She's loving it everywhere. Look at this crab. Where are you going? Oh yeah, there he comes. Woohoo! That's funny. Where did you find that? Stuck in the crab. 
stuck in the sand, yeah? Sasha just pointed out the Tigasau Lighthouse. We found it, it's over there. That is on the opposite side from Trogon's Perch. We've been looking for it actually, we didn't know where it was. So there's one on that point. And then if you follow this beach all the way down to Trogon's Perch, which is that fancy restaurant, there's another one over there. I'm gonna miss my girls when they go back to the UK without me. But at least I have Poppy, who's at home resting in the air conditioning. Look at this building here. This used to be part of where we've just been chilling out today, but the staff said they're not planning on rebuilding it just yet. Probably too much money. Maybe they'll use some of the funds from the tourists visiting the beach to rebuild that one. Story's found herself a sea urchin treasure, <laughs> which will probably ultimately end up getting thrown away again. Hmm? It's a really good condition, that one, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Any urchins in there? That's true. Normally the spikes would be coming out of that, wouldn't they? This is the eye. Ah. That's the eye of the urchin. Got it. Got it. That kid knows more about the sea than I do. <laughs> you can see the little volleyball court is being utilised now. Nobody was using that when we first got here. It was probably too hot and sunny, but shade is coming over. So I can happily say this place is worth the money. Only 20 pesos to get in and use some of the facilities or just get access. It's lovely here, absolutely lovely here. We definitely want to bring other people. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have somewhere to get a drink, like on the beach here, rather than being in a restaurant. So there isn't anything like that along here at all. Not really, no. Not if you just want to get a coconut and enjoy the sea. Exactly, yeah, and use a swing. Or, yeah, just walk down to where we, we just were. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely beautiful. One thing that's missing from this place is there's no toilet. So I don't know if that will change in the future, but yeah, keep that in mind. How's it going, guys? Ah, looking good. <laughs> New surf shop coming to the island right here when you come down the hill. Perfect place for it. Some of our friends there, they've been on this island the whole time we've been here too. Story hangs out with their kids and they're building a new surf place. So it's really buzzing here these days. We'll be able to get board rentals and wax for the board and leashes and stuff like that. They've also got a surf shop on the other side of this road as well. So this whole place has really increased in value in the last few years. I think having internet here helps as well. I mean, there used to be internet in Pacifico before. So now more people are coming here, they're sharing their experiences. <sighs> they're sweating here like I am. My goodness. Are you guys ready to go home? Yeah. I'm baking hot. Yes. We're all glistening with sweat, <laughs> aren't we? Sweat mixed with sun cream. Sweaty <laughs> And seawater. <kit>. <laughs> Let's get it off us. Those of you who've been missing Poppy, she's had a wonderful time, haven't you Pops? <laughs> if you're wondering why we don't take Poppy out with us when we go on these beachside adventures, oh, she just overheats. It's weird, I'm considering she's an island dog. She doesn't really enjoy being out that long. So we take her with us for smaller journeys, but if we're gonna be out all day, we would usually leave her at home and she's happier for it. And then we go out for a long beach run, 
she goes off lead and she just has a great time out on the beach as you've seen in many of our vlogs. We are planning on doing a bit of traveling with Poppy this year if possible, but we're still trying to figure out the logistics of it. But as an update, she is happy and healthy as ever. <laughs> and she's just generally a very good pet. I'm gonna do the shout out for today, which goes to Ormeng Kopus. <laughs> I'm not sure how exactly to pronounce that, but there you go. Huge thank you to Ormeng for being a member of our channel. And also I want to thank all you other members who have been supporting our community on the Patreon page and also on the YouTube memberships and Facebook memberships by giving us your latest comments on the weekend vlog where we were asking you what you think will be a great way for us to create content when we go back to the UK. It's nice to get some feedback from some of our core viewers, the ones that have been there for a long time. And yeah, I think we've got a decent idea of how to create content now when Sasha and I are in different countries over the next month or so. So massive thank you to you guys. If you're interested in becoming a member yourself, hit that join button down below or in the link in the description. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.